Greetings. Hi, Eugene. Cats. You're back. Oi, oi. Easing out my selector. So welcome. We're on Twitch. I think I messed up my chat box. I changed my um, computer. But I guess you can see it on the side, right? It's cool. How's everyone doing? Cats! It's great. I get to see like regular people now. It's cool. So today, I think I'm going to do, well, I know I'm going to do a, a track breakdown of um, serotonin. Um, I had to find it. It was on an old drive somewhere, but I found it. Easy, Craig. Um, yeah, so I'm going to run through it, break it down. This is what we did, I think it's last week. I should finish some of these off and stick them up somewhere. Maybe I'll do a stream at some point where it's like a finish off stream, like get these um, initial ideas and um, finish them off, basically. Cats, you love this. Nice. You were part of it. No, it's not really, I wouldn't say it's finished, but I could do another session on it. And um, I get a bit lazy towards the end. I think I've kind of made something. I've got an idea and then uh, I can't be asked to finish it off. But thank you, Cats, for saying that it sounds, it sounds great. So, let's see, let's see, let's see. Yeah, that was the, what we did last week. I think there's like, well, I know there's three things that we did and then I did a Magic Arda breakdown. So I guess this is the fifth installment, um, which is cool. I, I might do some more regular, I might do it like twice a week. Um, I still want to do my piano improvisation thing, which is going to be, um, could be interesting. It's just me farting around on the piano, trying to find a, like a Friday improv thing. Okay, let's get this off. Cool. So let's see. So the story here is... The track Serotonin just started, like many other things, I just have folders of vibes. I kind of do things just like I have on here, really. Just do a little vibe and um, I kind of number them. So this is lap vibe 423. Must be when I got a laptop. I used to have like a big um, tower before and someone convinced me to get a laptop. And um, so I did. So I started calling them L vibes. But I must have done quite a few vibes. Anyway, it was called Oval to start with. I've no idea why. But um, I'll just play this. So this is like from the first day, the first vibe. I've got a beard today. shape was about two years ago and I, I didn't like it. Just trim. I did have a haircut though today. My daughters um, cut my hair before and it, it, it wasn't great. They enjoyed it though. This is it, 
yeah, beginnings of um, serotonin. A lot of it's there actually from here. The halftime bit. You're 33 and can't grow a beard. I'd like to say it's gonna it's gonna come soon, but maybe it won't. But maybe that's a good thing. You don't have to shave or trim or anything like that. It's cool. Um, okay, so I found the arrangement, and here it is. So that's so the first um, the first vibe sounded pretty. The most of the bits were there, but let's just see what's going on. I haven't really looked into this. I checked it opened, um, and that's about it really. Halftime, lovely, thank you, yeah. See, that's in here, right? So let's see what's going on. I'll try and take it a bit leisurely. This is like a spire thing. I'll run through it all. Preset. being quite uh, proud of these drums when I did them. We'll look through it all anyway. So yeah, the story behind this, the vocal, it's a vocalist called Henrietta, he's amazing. I did a, I did a, a writing session with, with um, Henrietta and I think D, D Adams as well, big up D. Um, but it was on a different tune, something called Perfect. And I, I think I've just had this groove and sampled off those vocals, but we'll look into it all in a minute. find this bass again I've got a um, I think it's a contact plug-in called 808 Warfare and uh, it just keeps messing around so I think I've used my sample version quite a simple simple tune yeah Reminds you, um, Kat says, reminds me of Sincere sort of vibe, this one, the vocal. Yeah, it's like a sample job. Did I send it off to mix? Yeah, I did this one. Uh, Nathan Body did it. So this isn't the final, final, final thing. This is how it left me. I usually mix all my own stuff, but actually more recently I've got Nathan to do it because he's amazing and uh, it means I don't have to do it. And he produces lovely parts and stems. And I think it's always the, um, the simple tunes that are the best. There's probably some other stuff underneath as well. When you say Nathan Body, surname or like mad muscles, um, I don't think he'd mind me saying he doesn't have mad muscles. Probably the opposite. He's quite a svelte man. 
But yeah, uh, Nathan Body's the um, mixer. He used to be at my old studios at the Gin Factory. And uh, he used to be next door at Strong Room, actually, as well. Steve says the reverse vocal pad is cool. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, so I'll run through it all now. Let's look at these drums first. So I've got a drum bus. Let's see what's going on. Oh yeah, so this at the beginning must be a little how it all started. Yeah, it's just the drums. They're pretty much the same. Often, quite often there's loads of shit at the beginning of all my tunes. Just trying different things, trying different sounds. And then I kind of get to a stage where I'm like, okay, cool, it's, it's ready to go and I can start arranging it and doing it nicely. Oh, we lost loads of volume. Like that. Yeah, it's the um, thingy pop. Right, let's look at these drums. So, pretty simple. So the kick. Look at that, it's got nothing on it whatsoever, the channel. And, oh yeah, I've layered it up. So what are these? It's two kicks together. It's that one. So. And then there's this one. So like a more, um, something with more attack mixed with something else. Let's look at the velocities. Yeah, I'm really into my velocities, as you know. Do you know what? I, could, I, I, I um, When I was making this, I think I didn't actually know how to spell serotonin. I spelled it serotonin. That's probably like testament to um, my raving days and serotonin related topics. Anyway, so that's the kick. Yeah, and I've got velocities on it as well. I always like to kind of do, uh, um, yeah, put a bit of feeling and dynamics into the drums. So I'm all over the velocities the whole time. So we've got that kick. What's this snare saying? You have laid this as well. It's mostly that. Is it that as well? Yeah, there's a tiny bit of that on top. Together, it's just got an EQ of some nature. Yes, yeah, so I've just rolled it off down the bottom because there's a bit of rumble there, but nothing too spectacular and a just tiny lift here. So that's that. And then I guess we should move on to here because there's there's some kind of skippy snare going on. All right, yeah. Triple Max, what have you missed? Not a great deal. Just started um, doing a track breakdown of serotonin. Yeah, Nathan, cats. Uh, yeah, I think I said Nathan Hard Body or something last week. I like to call him that. But his name is actually Nathan Body. Check him out. He's done loads of really good stuff. He he, he mixed um, the Magic Guard album. Um, and he's done quite a lot of recent stuff on my label, like Pictures in My Head, uh, Soak It Up. Like the last couple of years worth of stuff, maybe a few years worth of stuff. Okay, so we've got that snare. This is just like a little filler, right? Yeah, and this has got a little, um, probably a roll off. Yeah, same thing. Maybe it's the same snare. Right, and then we've got a filler. What's that? Oh, these are little skips. Yeah. 
Yeah, so the swing on this, you can see it's just um, 16th triplets, 124. Nothing more special than that, really. But you have to kind of remember, if you're using samples, if the sample's not exactly trimmed, there might be a slight gap at the beginning, which is sort of the equivalent of using a different swing. Can I have a look at this one? Yeah, you can see actually, let's see. See some of these, the one that was at the beginning, see that for example, isn't completely on. So that would have the same effect as, as obviously delaying the sample. I don't do that intentionally, but sometimes it's um, probably a bit messy. Okay, so we've got that filler thing. This I imagine is some kind of crash. Yeah. Okay, and then we got the these hats. Still just sixteenth triplets. Bit velocity business. Yeah, so I've done my thing. Where I've obviously played it in like I have um, when I've kind of made things on here. And there's been an t t t at the top and I've swapped it out for something else. So just muted it on here. But this is kind of the, you know, the beginning beats and the little skips that come before that. So this will be the top hat. Yeah. Logic swing D into retirement. <laughs> I pretty much always use on garagey stuff. I just go 16 T's. That's what used to be called on uh, Cubase. Yeah, so this is just a simple um, top hat. But, so both those hats together are like this. What have I got on there? Nothing on there whatsoever. And then with this little filler. Freehand swing, yeah. Moving, moving stuff around is cool as well. I think if you're working in audio, you can just delay stuff off. I mean, you can do it with samples as well, but um, you can kind of see it on the screen more. So it's just a normal snare and a little kind of offbeat snare as well. And then what I've got in this drum bus, I've got a... So I've got the SSL comp, just slightly touching it, quite a long attack, as is traditional, really short release. So you're just kind of letting the um, initial pop of the drum come through, the attack's taking a, a, a little bit of a while to catch it, and then it's sucking it straight back off with the release. Uh, four to one ratio. And then I've got... Um, a retro color and I think this is just a reverb yeah I think I must have just got this plug in because I don't really use it for um, reverbs but it's cool and then actually interestingly enough on the master bus there's this native instrument supercharger Makes a lot of difference. That's over the whole mix. And it's on this mix widener setting. But we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. Okay, so that's sort of the drums. Well, it is the drums. So this main riff, I think you can kind of see some stuff going on underneath this. So I've bounced this to audio. I bounced it, but um, it looks like 
that's come from Serum. Just check this out quickly. Okay, so I've just got into Serum at this point. And it's a preset. So it looks to me like I've tried these chords that are tenths. It's like a tenthy thing. Right, I've tried it in some different uh, patches. Let's see what this one is. Um, another serum. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't use that. So yeah, I, I, I kind of quite often do that. I'll get some chords that I like um, and try them in different synths and maybe layer them. I'm not sure exactly what I put together to make this. Yeah, it's this um the serum one. And then at the beginning we've got just a little bit drier. Got some on this bus, what's that? Oh an RC forty eight. Um Kat said you uh, heard me mention Cubase. Any reason I switched from Cubase? Um, I think when I was on Cubase, it was on um, an Atari and um, I got a Mac. So I thought basically I'd um, get into Logic. What's all this here? Yeah. Okay, so we've got that. Um, here we go with the lamb chops and rev chops. Just some sort of random reverse chops. Let's see what they are. Yeah, like I think I said before, I've still got my um, Atari somewhere. I might try and get it out one day and see if it actually works. Floppy disks took about, depending on the tune, like three minutes to save. So we've got these, yeah, nothing on those either on the channel. It's a longer one. Yeah, so these vocals will be um, vocals um, that have been reversed, but quite often what I do is, um, I've got delay on this vocal, why is that? Um, quite often what I do is um, get a vocal, um, stick it out on Logic, put a reverb on it, um, space the little vocals out, and then um, bounce that as an audio file reverse that audio file then um so so you're getting ramps kind of going upwards and uh sample those off so that's what i've done here yeah Yeah, we've got the groove. And these are the Henrietta vocals. So 
So yeah, like I think we did these for a different tune. So I will have got the groove and just spun these over it. You've seen me do it in other weeks. So all in um, EXS or samples. I think when we did the session, we just had, um, we, we didn't treat it like a song. We just had a list of um, words kind of written out on a, on a piece of paper and Henry has to just kind of sang them in kind of random ways. But it was for something else. It's, it's a good tune, the other one, actually. I haven't finished it, but... I think I had Leanne Le Havis on it at some point. Yeah, so these Henrietta things. And these others, I think, they're just spice vocals. A lamb's tail, yeah. <laughs> There's no, there's no chopping going on this week. I have to do some next week. Get some mint on that. Yeah, let's have a look at these samples. What are these? Uh, I think they, yeah, I think these are just from Splice. It's just random stuff. Most of them are pretty. Oh, there we go. What's after it? Yeah, they're from Spice. But mostly people um, just put pretty whack vocals on Spice. I, you know, I understand it because otherwise you, um, you're giving away too much. But for me, they're cool, just like little fillers. But let's have a look at this channel. So um, it's got some like horrible brick, brick wall limiter on. Let's just solo this. Look at that, game reduction. And then it looks like I've got the supercharger on again. Wide piano for some reason. It kind of adds a sort of sheen up the top and widens it. And this must be the delay we're hearing. Okay. So there's an echo boy. With like a crotchet on. Oh yeah, that, so that's been compressed and it's side chained from somewhere. It's probably the kick. So yeah, from the vocal channel, it's going out to a delay, and then on that delay channel, it's going to a compressor that's been side chained, probably by the kick. Let me check that in a minute. And then a reverb after that. That's a little bit impressive for me. <laughs> Let's try it without that stuff. Yeah. Okay, and then we've got um, Henrietta again with a different delay on. So this is the same bus, bus 12, that um, delay bus we just looked at. Supercharge, is it multi-band compressor? Um, I don't know what it is. Yeah, I think, yeah, it definitely, it's got a multi-band element to it, definitely. Because it, I think it kind of splits the, um, the frequency into like three parts and then boosts them. And it's got some kind of phase thing going on for widening. It's good, it's, um, yeah, it's native instruments, I think. I like their plugins. They don't have that many. Well, they didn't, um, but they're cool. 
Yeah, so this is the same sample instrument, probably. Um, other than drums, you don't... Oh. <laughs> Henrietta. Sorry, Henrietta. She's wicked, though. So, yeah, you can see there's just like a, a, a one long audio file, and I've just taken chop, 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 chops from it. And then just added a bit of sauce after. Chop it, add sauce. Um, and there's something else on this. Yeah, that's just uh, a reverb. The Waves one, I think that is. Yeah, so all these vocals, they've got quite a bit on them. Because without all this stuff, they'd be pretty dry. Something else here. Yeah, just that. So a combination of those things together. <laughs> Behind the scenes set Henrietta, yeah. I didn't know that I was going to play. That's cool. I've got nothing to hide. Yeah, so we've just got a combination of vocals, sampled, some from Splice, some from Henrietta. Um, a fairly big delay thing going on. to see what instrument 17 is yeah i think it's the kit so basically the there's a, a sidechain compressor on the um echo return okay let's look at the bass i think it's just my this is i had to swap this out because it wasn't playing this is my um, 808 from 808 Warfare, I think, that I sampled off. And I think it's um, an octave apart, so a lo lower octave and a higher octave. And it's been driven. Okay, it's just the Logic Overdrive. It's actually knocking some of the top off. And then there's an EQ after that. Okay, it's quite a bit of lift there. Right, yeah. That's just to add some harmonics up the top. So you can kind of hear it on um, a phone or something. So a different version of the serum synth that I showed you earlier. I've got to open the chop shop scene. What can I have for sale in the chop shop? We need a vegan. What's a vegan version? Get a vegan chop, a tofu chop. Oh yeah, here we've got a tambourine that's being added in. This is just a, yeah, just a eighth one. Yeah, just a little extra tambourine. Um, it's got a spreader on it. Got beans, yeah. Aubergines, good one. Corn chop, I love that, Craig Beat, nice. <laughs> Mo Farah endorsed corn chop. You got it, you're on fire. Uh, so the tambourine's just got like a little widener.
it's nothing that special. Not special as uh, a, a, a mint sauce. So there's two of these synth things combined here. I bounce them to audio. I don't think there's any um, flexing on any of this, or maybe there is a bit on here. Linda McCartney chop, chop silly. There you go. Yeah, so one of these is a uh, higher one, a lower one. Falafel chop. That's like the chorus, really. And then we have a, a sort of more verse section. Sandili says, is it just the same chop, an octave down? Uh, the synth chop, it's like a synth part intense that I played on serum and I think it's a different patch so I've just layered the patches basically oh Christian Webster other than drums I don't group channels any reason um, not particularly I quite often group other things but I just haven't in this for some reason like if something sounds good and I don't feel like I need to group it then I just won't do it yeah, so there's just a drum um, track stack here and nothing else. I mean, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, so that's that. And then... This low, dirty bounce. Yeah, there's quite a few combinations of this simple riff. So that functions as a verse, really. Chorus. Something going on here. Yeah, some little reverse. Um, that's literally an audio reverse. Just reversed. Just to bring us into that. Everyone needs a low, dirty bounce in their lives. Elon Musk, the whole project looks like Skittles. Yeah, it does really. You mean the sweets or the um, bowling Skittles? I guess you mean sweets. I like colouring stuff. Oh yeah, we should have looked at this pad, the very beginning thing. Oh, this is Spire. I think it's quite a splodge of... Um... Yeah, it's all those notes together. Do you know what? Maybe my piano's on. That's what's going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, look at those notes. That's better. Oh, dick. Um, so 
what it's like. Those notes. A squash. And what are we in? We're like, mm, mm. It's kind of like E flat minor. Um, so then we get the half chime bit, cat. What trick did you, did you learn, real UKG? I'm Tell me. So for these halftime drums, I must have just bounced the drums from above to audio, and it's got a Logic auto filter on. That's without. This is with the filter. Oh, the little reverse. Cool. Yeah, it's um in Logic it's just it's nice. You've got a reverse button now. Um so I could reverse these for example. You can just check this box and then you're reversed. The whole world is backwards. I like watching TV upside down. Did you know that? Yeah, the reversing's cool. Yeah, especially for those little touches. Um, where was it? This one, yeah. Just to get in there. Okay, so we've got the halftime drums. This pad's back again. Some different Henrietta vocals. Jamie. Yeah, it's serotonin. There's nothing in it. Upside down TV, yeah, I like. I don't do it a lot. It's something I do with my kids for a laugh. Upside down the sofa, just watch TV. Yeah, why not? I reckon the blood goes to your head and it feeds your brain a bit more. Let's see what other hidden stuff there was in here. Bus 12. That was the delay bus. Maybe that's uh, that gets muted. Right, yeah. Let's look at the automation. Right, yeah. Oh yeah, because this vocal delay is running, I want to be really clean when it drops. So there's a mute automated. There. Oh, I've tried some strings. Reminds me of Sweeney Todd, the Stephen Sondheim thing. <laughs> That's how you watch it unintentionally after night out, yeah. Or you can just turn your TV upside down, save yourself the, the effort. So what were these other strings I was trying? didn't make the cut. Uh, this one. That didn't last long, did it? So these are just 
to string things from um, the spice. But they didn't make it. They didn't make it onto the plate. Uh, what else was there? So yeah, I just I've tried these. What's this one? I've tried it in Omnisphere, the the main riff as well. Yeah, that that didn't go well, did it? Kyoto. Didn't make um, the chop shop plate. Jamie, is this the final mix of muscle? No. Um, my mate Nathan Body mixed this one. I think he did. Yeah, he must have. I've forgotten which EP this is on, but I might have done some and he might have done some. I'm not sure, but I've, I've got a feeling this uh, was mixed by Nathan. I don't think this is the final the final mix. Oh, someone else answered. Thanks, John. So, yeah, it's a pretty simple tune. Let's look at this master bus. So, I've obviously just got Supercharger because I'm using it on everything. I reckon I did this, I don't know, three, four years ago. Yeah, it makes a lot of difference. And I probably bounce the parts for the mix with this on, I'd imagine. Because it makes a lot of difference. Compressor in the middle that just canes it. And this character does something, and it's got a saturator as well. Uh, attack to, to let stuff through and then release. So yeah, compressor settings for that. A distortion. Then I've just got a little lift with the with the Poltec, like I quite often do. So it's at um, 12 kilohertz, just a little boost, just a little kind of top lift. Yeah, top end ser serotonin, our, our favourite. Yeah, it's in contact supercharger, I think. Let me look 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 for it. Um, Yeah, these are my native instruments plugins, and it's there, yeah. So I don't have that many. The RC48 is wicked. You've seen me use that before. Um, and I like the compressors too. The soft tube ones are, are wicked. What else do they do? Yeah, the solid bus comp. I use that all the time. I've actually got a real one in here, a G plus, G plus compressor, but I, I don't ever use it. I used to from everything. Like um, before, I went in the box. I've got a Neve thirty three six oh nine C. I used to have that and an SSL um, G bus compressor that always um, I used to run everything through. I think I had a Focusrite Red 2, like a red-faced um, EQ that used to be on my master bus all the time. But um, I just kind of work in the box now pretty much. This chat reminds you of Yahoo Chat, so <laughs> circa 2001. Yeah, the, the tape plugin. Yeah, I haven't really used that one. Oh, right, the, the, the chat. Okay, cool. <laughs> 
Have I used Sitomic Glue? No, no. I don't know. Who makes that one? Is that a Native Instruments thing? Uh, so that wasn't there. And then the trusty L2, Fab Builder. A little tip for this, apparently, you should take True Peak Limiting off. Do you know what? I just downloaded this new, uh, a demo of this new thingy, Bob, that everyone's raving about. Uh, yeah, this one. Let's try this instead. I could do a shooter, actually. I don't really know this at all. Brainworks. So this has got a release. See you. can link them. Metering's good. You get a, um, a phase meter, more correlation, and then balance. What's this? XL, yes. How far you can push it. And you get um, LUFSs. filter which is good for the very bottom end so this atomic glue thing yeah I haven't used it Ableton bought it right so it's native on Ableton yeah you can get it on Fruities too. Yeah, the graphics are cool, aren't they? I'll have to play that later, but anyway, so on this track, it had this. But if Nathan mixed it, um, I won't have bounced it with the limiter, obviously. Yeah, there's not a lot else to say about this tune, really. It's, it just came together pretty quickly, I think. If you heard the um, the original demo, the oval thing, a lot of it was there, just kind of got filled out. Um, even the halftime thing was there, and it was I think it was just a minute and a half, right? Let's check again this one. Yeah, it's just 150. You can hear the drums aren't as sharp. Real Yuka G, what's bouncing? Um, when you get uh, pieces of sound and you bounce them to disc, so you turn them into audio. So it could be audio that's there already um, and you're combining some things. When you bounce it, it just means it's like printing to a tape machine. It's recording, basically. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, that was that was pretty similar to the original thing. I might have to do another one. I've got another one I can do, actually. Yeah, beer after the chops. There's a, there's a place near my house called Quality Chop House, which could be something to think about. Yeah, they're tense. Let me try and find it. Yeah, just tense. Disclosure lads in the chat, yeah.
Very simple. Compressor am I using for side chaining the pads? I don't know if there is one on the pad. Oh, the pad at the beginning, the Vario pad, let's see. Yeah, so it's the um, Wave C1 comp. And it's being triggered from the kick that's probably on bus one. Yeah. So you can hear that. Just a tiny bit. Was it 1. 1. 1.6 ratio, somewhere around there? So just a tiny bit. I'll take it off and you can hear. So that's without. With just a, a, a tiny little dent into it. Yeah, I'd like to be a guest judge on the disclosure thing. Yeah, it'd be cool. I've watched it, I mean, it kind of inspired me to get going, really. Like watching Kenny Beats and then seeing the disclosure stuff's been wicked. And now I kind of realise exactly um, how much effort goes into trying to set this mofo up. Like, yeah, I've switched my computer so the chat's gone, but um, I'll fix that. Yeah, anything else for this one? Because I um, I can do another one. I've got another one sort of ready to go, I think. You'd like to see Sanctuary Breakdown. Um, yeah, that's, I'm not going to have that. That was from like 20 years ago. That probably would have been early Logic. Um, Jamie, yeah, sorry again, you've probably been through this. Does, does the supercharger replace the drum compressor? Yeah, I think it um, it sort of does in this, really. It's basically, I've got a new toy and I'm just using it on everything. Yeah, and there's, um, oh no, sorry, the supercharger's on the mix bus. It's on everything. Which is a bit wild, but... No, there's a solid bus compressor, an SSL, on the drum bus. Tiny bit. And then this um, retro color, just for reverb for some reason. But I haven't used the supercharger for ages, so I should use it more. It just had, it just did something to these drums, just made them kind of crispy and, and, and stick out. Oh, you want to see the actual chords? Yeah, cool. Uh, so, so I bounced it all, but I'm sure this will show us. That's it. Oh, yes, there's three notes in. F sharp, C sharp, A sharp. With the little kind of skippy thing in. Someone said, um, do a birthday remix uh, breakdown. Yeah, I'll be up for that. I got it on my computer, but um, I'll get nicked. I got nicked for not even playing Cathedral for Magic Garda album. I was doing the breakdown a couple of weeks ago, 
and the bot found something that sounded similar because I think I was just playing the piano and the bass together and the bots muted that piece of audio. So I'm pretty sure unless I got clearance first or they sorted it out, um, if I started doing the birthday remix, it would just get muted and the bots would have a field day. But yeah, I only did that last year. So that's on my computer. If someone tells me it's cool and it won't get um, taken down, I won't get nicked, then I'd, yeah, I'll do it happily. These bots are clever, man. Who are they? But that's the mad thing that, you know, you have to understand, like when you sign records to majors, they own the recording. They own it. You don't own it anymore. Um, but all these tunes, because they're on my label, 892, they're mine. I own the masters. That's why I'm kind of just using these. But um, with the Magic Arda album, Universal owned that forever, for perpetuity, for the whole universe. So the bots come and uh, find you. It's mad. That's why Taylor Swift has re-recorded all her stuff because the, the record company owned the original master, the original version, the recording forever. Um, and she didn't like it. So you, you can re-record stuff. Like I've done re-record of um, Sincere actually. I could, probably, I could actually break that down because it's a re-record. I remade it and found all the samples again, but I haven't actually put it out. Have I ever met Bonobo? Yeah, man, he's, uh, I haven't met him, but um, I think he's sick. Yeah, I'd love to work with him. I think it was, um, is it Beyond Sands or something like that? Th th that album, probably from 10, 12 years ago, um, I remember listening to that a lot, a lot. Yeah, he's wicked. I think he lives in LA now, right? Very talented geezer. Yeah, I'll be well up for it. So anyone want to ask anything else about this? I don't mind what it is. Yeah, the sincere thing, I'll, I'll work on that. Black Sands, that's it, yeah. I do have the project for the Goldie remix. Ooh, probably not, no. See, I used to... Um, I still do quite often like mix all my own tunes and it would have come from I think the Goldie remix was like Atari day so I would have done it started it at home done all the sampling at home just with an Atari and then I had a way of getting the um getting a floppy disk out of the Atari and loading it into a Mac in the SSL that I used to use um, and that had Cubase on but on a Mac and so I will have basically got it into that computer, got it working, put all the Akai samplers, put the, 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 get the, got the samplers going. And then at the end of the day, when the mix was done, I just print it to DAT, record it to DAT. Um, and so there were never any parts done. So it would require me to find the original floppy disk and all the Akai samples. And I don't think it's happening. I mean, the Goldie thing, that, that was like um, 20 years ago. The Shadow Child remix, um, that might be easier to do. I don't really know the rules, but um, if someone else owns the master and uh, the bot is kind of ready to go for that, then I think it gets muted. But correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe it's just the majors, a bit like on uh, SoundCloud. Yeah, so I think that's it for serotonin. Quite simple, one, three, two... BPM, pretty simple drums, some vocal samples, and that's it. Um, James asking, stupidly late, not stupidly late, just not late, you just arrived when you arrived, that's cool. How did I play right in the drums, into the sample or battery? Yeah, they're all um, EXS, well, it's called sampler now. But yeah, I always play my drums in from the keyboard. And so, yeah, it was just layered two drums together. And I would have just played them into a click, like I have in the other weeks when I've kind of made stuff live. Um, and the snare, just from EXS again. Uh, and there was a little skippy snare, but these are just all played in. 
Yeah, it's the little skip thing. And hats too. Yeah, 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 it's fine to do it live. That's why all the DJs can stream live, but um, if you want to watch it back, it's just not happening because it just gets muted. How did I learn jazz piano? I didn't. I, I, I grew up um, playing classical piano. And uh, when I was at college, I started playing in bands, so I'd had to kind of work it out. And I've just sort of developed. I'm, I'm not really a jazzer. I just fart around on the piano, just found some things I like. How much did I write before I worked with the vocalist? Um, this the, the the vocals for this track, the ones that are called Henrietta, it's a mixture of splice, just little samples, and then um, a great vocalist called Henrietta. She's on it as well for the main things, like serotonin is her singing. But it says here, Henrietta Perfect, and I did another track called Perfect that never came and never got finished. And I think I basically lifted those vocals from that session and tried them in this. I quite often do that. So I like having sampler instruments um, of vocals because you can just dial them up and pitch them and stick them in. I think we found a good one with me in. Yeah, but they're just, they're, they're from a different session. My favourite synth. Um, <coughs> I've got an OB6 and a, a, a Prophet 6. I like them. I think actually I like the, the Moog or Moog. Sub 37 for, for bass. It's amazing. Just sounds wicked. Oh yeah, that was me then. I was missing. What do I say here? Do it for you. For you. <laughs> for you. Yeah, I like that. Suggesting stuff while while you're recording. I'm for you. I'm for change my world. What you doing to me? Time to make a tune from scratch. Mm, I don't think I'm gonna do that today. I'm just doing breakdowns. I'll do one next week if you want. I think I've done three so far. Uh, I recorded the vocals not in this studio, in my old studio in Clerkenwell. How did I come up with the string for Crazy Love? Catchy. <laughs> yeah, it's us in the room trying it. Yeah. The string for intro for Crazy Love. Um, I just played it. There's, I'll show you. It's from um, a Yamaha TG500, which was, um, it's just a sound module. And I sampled it off actually, so I can show you. Um, TG500 and there's a pizzicato thing on there here they are yeah it's that one so this is for another time I'm not getting nick for this I bet I do the bots get this so it's just um, like A minor you know with stuff at the top and D minor but I've just put a That's basically it. I just played it. Can you put? <laughs> I don't want to get like um, power about bots. I don't really care. It should only be if you play the master, though, really. But I, I don't know how it happened on the the Magic Arda thing. It was only a tiny bit, about two thirds of the way through. Respect on the blue panels. Where's that? What in the studio? You mean? 
you're an octave high, yeah, well. That was that, wasn't it? Okay, do you want me to do another one? I, I can do liquid as well. Someone was um, really asking for that last week, so I thought I'd get that ready as well. Shall I do another quick breakdown? I can't really make uh, breakdowns last hours and hours, especially when they're simple. Liquid's a bit different, though. I don't think it's complicated, but there's a lot more audio in that. Okay, let's do... Yeah, cool. Don't save. Right, let's see if this one boots up. Everyone cool? No chopping today. I have to do some chops next week. What kind of tune shall I make next week? Chop, chop, chop. Last week did kind of like a choppy thing. Yeah, we're in. We're in. Okay. So I haven't got any earlier versions of this. These are these are all quite simple. I've got a feeling this started with the roads. And um this will be I think I started this at home and it would have been my roads. I've got I've got three roads and it's a Rhodes Mark II suitcase <clears throat> that I had for a while. And I think Yeah, this it, it started with this loop of roads. Yeah, I'll, I'll play some. Yeah, maybe I should do something that's just like only synth based or just a little bit more around the room. I think that's a good idea. I'll I'll, I'll do that next week. I'll get all the synths ready to go and just um, sort of bounce some bits in. Michael Champagne, uh, it'd be fantastic if you did deconstruction vids for your older tracks such as Matlock, my love, Guy Simone. Yeah, they're, they're so old, I don't, I'm don't. i not going to be able to find the discs for those, I'll be honest. So yeah, this is started with the roads. Do you know what, let's see what else was in that roads part. Take the loop off. See, this must be a part of me playing. So I think this is me just vibesing to to the beat, probably. Let me take some of this stuff off. Yeah, remix comp. I'm just going to get going. Um, I need to do a few more streams and get some more Twitch points. I'm going to have to do two a week, it looks like, to get um, get to the next level. That's cool. I'm going to do piano improv one. I might do one at this weekend, maybe Saturday or Sunday. I'll, I'll tweet about it when I'm going to do it. But it will just be me suffering at the piano, trying to squeeze something out. Yeah, so this is interesting. Didn't know that. So I've just, I must have had the, the beat running and just um, played. And just ended up taking out this tiny, tiny bit that's been the, the kind of foundation for it. Yeah, let's look at these plugs actually, if you're interested. What an impressive array of plugins. Guitar rig. So a bit of distortion on it. 
and we've got um, 1176 compressor 20 to 1 ratio so it's giving it a good old squash spread them and then a sound toys crystallizer Have I got a go-to um, chords that I use? I try not to, but I think anyone who plays keys, y you kind of learn shapes. But it's quite interesting in this one because I've just picked out a tiny bit of roads and looped it around, and it's become the, the, the like, tonal center, or it's like a pedal, really, I call it. So we've got a crystallizer, reverb, West Church, and then some kind of EQ just rolling off the bottom. So we've got that Rhodes. Home Rhodes, yeah, I did this one at home. I think the recording for it. Let's see what this one is. Um, so another bit of Rhodes from the Mark II. Guitar rig again for distortion, just a little bit. Spread them. And a seventh head and reverb again. Same thing, West Church. So we've got this kind of tonal foundation, two bits of rides. <laughs> this didn't get used, but I wonder what it is. I know it comes later. Is it the... Da -da me vibesing on it but it didn't get used that yeah yeah there was a, we looked at the the roads recording I did I think this would have been I think I must have started with the beat and then um, on this road stuff I've never looked at this. It's interesting for me too. It's long. Yeah. So yeah, just loads of roads and I've taken bits off. Let's do these plugs back on. Okay. So yeah, let's look at the... Um, so we've got the roads times two. Okay, so we've got a percussion loop. Don't know where that's from, somewhere. Um, and that's just as it is. It's got a lot rolled off. Right, it would have been like that. Just the top end of that percussion loop. Uh, and then we've got a kick. Lovely. 
blade up again. So it's and slightly different velocities for the mix between the kicks. Oh, it's guy doing a DJ set tonight. I'll be watching it. I could do one. I haven't played for years, but I've got I've got CDJs up there. So there's a kick, there's a rim, and there's a percussion loop so far. Look at this, so it's like a little skip. Uh, the kicks in a sampler instrument library thing. Yeah, yeah, I've just, I, I, I've basically brought my samples with me from right at the beginning when they, when they were kind of Akai samples, Roland S760 samples. I've just brought all that through to um, EXS. And uh, I got someone, Peter, who was kind of assisting me for a bit. I got him to basically go through all my floppy disks and zip disks and jazz disks and pull all the samples off. And then I made uh, instruments from them. I did all my DAT tapes as well. He helped me do it. I might show you. This could be a bit revealing. Um... Check some of this out. Yeah, so this will be the DAT tape. Look, Rocket's on there. This is me. Look, 97. And uh, I did, yeah, I got him to take a picture of the DATs, the, the inlays. So you can see here, this is the inlay for that DAT from 97. So I'm doing Rocket, the thing that I did in Pure Bliss. You can see I've kind of done a few different passes. This, this is a DAT tape, so the little kind of mini 8mm tapes. Said it's coming, that was a, a Memsy thing. Run To Me, I think that was one of my things. Hurt You So, like the Johnny L thing that's that I did with Ramsey and Fenn. More run to me's a little bit later. Mad changes. I think I did that with Mr. Jones. Yeah, it's interesting to see the um, that inlays. I was quite sort of fastidious about doing them. So MJ One, I started off. Yeah, that's very near the beginning of me making stuff. MJ One, MJ Two. It's quite interesting. Pure Bliss 3. I think that was um, Caprice. That was the singer's name. I can't remember. Love Bug, Beta. That would be like the beginning version of that. Anyway, that's what this um, Caprice thing was. Anyway, you're going to be mine. I Refuse Remix. You can see exactly when they were done. Did a lot of stuff in 97. Your Mind with Guy Simone. Fresco, I don't know what that is. Sexify, that was something with Memzy. It's good. Uh, uh, and most of these came out. Can I play loads of samples of kicks? Yeah. Oh, what, from the Dats? Yeah, probably. Let me just see what I've got on here. I have to be a bit careful what I'm showing. Um... No, I can't do that right now. Yeah, there's the, 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 I've got a lot of kicks and stuff. Uh, anyway, back to liquid. So we've got a percussion loop, pretty simple. Uh, the kick, the rim. I 
And I think the, 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 the drums um, progress as they go on, the pattern changes. So we've got those drums and these two Rhodes that we had before. What did you mean then, Jamie? Oh, what guy's doing a, a DJ set from St. Lucia? How did he get there? I've been there a few times, actually. There's that, um, is that Barbados. Yeah, I've been to St. Lucia. Um, and this dabber is going to be the pop, 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 pop. Do I have a favourite musical mode? Um, I, I'm aware of the modes, but I try not to be. So I'll just think about something in terms of which scale it is over another scale. I'll get the piano up. Um, this is like C major, but over uh, D minor. And then up to the um, upper minor third. So just all white notes, and then just going D. sort of vibe um i don't know what 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 mode is that someone tell me it's like c major but over d minor i yeah oh jamie sorry i was saying putting them in exs lets you play loads of different samples at once yeah 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 i like to have them laid out um because you, you you'll see in the other streams that i did i just base i'm like a mad when i just go through just pressing sounds until i hear something Oh, guys, he's quarantining before he's allowed in the US. Oh, he's stuck in St. Lucia. Well, <laughs> it could be worse, couldn't it, Jeff? D, Dorian. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's like a Dorian scale. So we kind of covered that. Let's look at the, the dabbers, what's on there. Uh, decapitator, so sort of distortion. A lot of that on, by the looks of it. Let's take this delay off as well. So it was like this. It's actually knocked quite a lot of the attack off. Uh, and then there's a big delay. Echo Boy. Um, a dotted quaver, dotted eighth. So yeah, that's just like a little um, dabber over the top. So these are all um, Rhodes recordings from at home.
I think I'm, this is my mix actually on the record. Yeah, it is because I remember having to, I sent it off to master with the bass really loud. And I think it was Matt Colton at um, Metropolis sent it back and I'm like, how did I do that to the bass? So I had to fix it. Yeah, look, you can see at the top, bass adjust. So yeah, I did mix this one. Maybe I did serotonin as well. This is from the same EP. Okay, so drums wise, we've got a top hat that's been added. Just at the top, loads of EQ. Yeah, just get rid of the bottom. Uh, and another hat. Oh, yeah, so interesting. This isn't 16 T's, this track. It is 16th at 58%. And I imagine everything's on that. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so it's a different kind of feel. It's it's like not a skippy triplet garage thing. It's a little bit more adult than that. Oh, I shouldn't say that. You know what I mean? So 16th at 58. Have I got a road to him at home? Um, I have, I've lived in different places. I've got a few roads in my life. I've had different um, pianos too. But yeah, in the studio, I don't know if you can see it. I've got this road in my vocal booth, and that's um, a Mark One, a suitcase Mark One 88. I talked about it before. Um, Mike Skinner gave it to me actually a couple of years ago. And then outside here at Strong Room, I've got. Um, a Mark One stage, which means it's basically on legs. It doesn't have that amp on the bottom, and it's a 73, so 73 notes long. But that's nice as well, the Mark One. Um, and I've got a uh, Mark Two. I sort of did have one. I don't think I'll be getting that one back. It's um, the Mark Two, and that's a suitcase, and it's 88 as well. Uh, slightly softer sound, but I really like the Mark Ones. But you get. Um, Depends what year they're from. Some of the 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 hammers and tines is kind of, they're made from plastic. Some of the hammers, some of them in certain years are made from uh, wood, and it's a bit like pianos. They all um, they all sound different. They can be the same model, like the the piano I have here in the studio. This is that working? Yeah, this U one Yamaha U one. Uh, I remember going to get that. I hired it to start with and I went to Piano Place and there were probably like 20 U1s and they all sounded different. All of them sounded and, and I kind of fell in love with this one. I hired it to start with uh, and ended up kind of buying it because I loved it so much. But that that's the one that's all over the Magicardo album. Probably every record I've made in the last five or six years, something like that. Okay, onwards. So we've got those extra hats and stuff. There's a drum bus. You can see I've I've gone I've I put a bit more effort into this one. <laughs> so we just on this is the drum bus. We've got a solid bus compressor. Oh, you've noticed my chair. Yeah. It's um I think it's made by Targ. Like a mate of mine, it, it was in the same studio complex as me, he had one. I'm just like, mate, I've got to get one of those. It is cool. You can sit in like different ways on it, but it's cool. I've had the um, Ergon, what's it called? Miller, blah, blah, I've, I've got some of those as well, but I've, 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 I've gone to the um, the Hog side. Yes, yeah, so we've got solid bus comp. Uh, and this is a filter. I think that's, that's probably automated. Yeah, we have a little filter down there. Yeah, so it would be for Yeah, just little finishes like that. And there's quite a lot on the master bus here. Well, just the Poltec and a, a Manly EQ as well. But we'll get to that. Bart Simpson, yeah. He's been with me for years, this guy. Legend. He, he just loves it on the piano. He loves it on the piano because it's, uh, it's got, it's like a little quarter pipe. Yeah. 
actually sit on an upturned bucket. <laughs> you need to upgrade. Maybe it's cool. Upturned bucket, upside down TV, lamb chops. We're getting a good bit of um, vocab on this chat. Go on, chat. Without Bart, no coal, that's it. <laughs> if there's no Bart in the studio, I'm not doing the session. Get him a bit closer, stick him here. He can go here. He loves it, he loves it anyway. He just wants to be in the studio. Yeah, Kat, you need to get a um you need to get a chair upgrade. Okay. So we still got this space roads going through. This is a tonic, this is a pedal that runs all the way through this tune. It's literally just a loop. And actually, I bet if you remove it, it sounds totally different. This is without just that simple roads. And it, 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 it's the foundation for everything. And actually, it's kind of, it's a little bit discordant. It's interesting because there's an there's an F natural at the bottom, um, and it stays like that. But the bass actually goes between F natural and D, so it's like the F is still there, but then it it sort of becomes part of D minor or D Dorian, I guess. Okay. Oh, we've got some interesting piano things to explain in a minute. Okay, let's look at the bass. This is a Spectrasonics thing. Um, so it's like it from SH101. It's got good um, aftertouch on it. Shit, you get kind of different stuff going on. So I've just vibed. These are quite big parts. I think I've just played them. MJC's rider, Bart. Yeah. <laughs> What's my MIDI keyboard? It's um, a Novation SL something. Um, it's not a flash, but I just I'm, I'm really used to the um, the springiness of it. It's like semi-weighted. It's not too floppy, but it's not too hard. I like it to play. It's bouncy enough to play drums, but not um, so light that you can't get some kind of keyboard feel off. I've got one at home as well. My little setup there. Um, so after touch is this. So when you press MIDI keyboard get the note once you've pressed it down my finger's still on the note you can squash it even more and that's the after touch you can see it here on the screen it's um this controller one so you can actually push it and it's opening a filter on this so it just gives you another um layer of expression yeah i'll, I'll show you the plugins in a minute no, it's SL Mark II, I think. It's pretty old, like probably five years ago or something like that. So this is a, we saw it, Trillion. Preset, I don't know if I've messed around with it. I might have. Uh, so first in the chain, got rid of something at the bottom. I'm glad I did a little bit more on this tune. I've sort of mixed it because uh, serotonin, it was just nothing. So this is without the EQ. Any reason I like using the list editor at the side? 
Mm, I, don't, I don't know what you mean by that. There's these bits that tell you about the channels and then obviously the track names. It's pretty standard sort of uh, logic. Shebang. So yeah, a bit of EQ. You can see what's going on. Slight lift at 100 hertz-ish. Uh, slight lift at 3.3. .3. Uh, let me take these off actually do it in order yeah it sounds quite thin like that so our friend the decapitator he's back decapitate those chops um, beefy <laughs> beefy chops Um, cats, sorry, when I go on MIDI, any reason you're not using the list editor at the side when I go on MIDI? Oh, yeah, that's a good question. Um, so basically, I have a slightly weird setup. I, I, you know, I pretty much know that everyone uses Logic like this now. But in earlier versions of Logic, you didn't have this um, split screen thing going on where you can use the mixer and all that kind of jazz. Um, so you used to have screen sets. So each um, number on the numeric keypad, you could uh, capture, you could lock a certain set of windows. So I always had four as my edit window. <coughs> so if I press four, I get my edit window. Actually, that, that this, yeah, I use it to show notes. So I have a transport at the bottom. I can see my piano roll. Uh, just the same as you get the split screen on the, the front page, I can kind of see all, all my controllers. And I really like having um, all the list down here. I'll show you. Let me try and not mess the tune up. Uh, so, for example, with, with these hats. Uh, you, you've probably seen it in when, when I've been knocking stuff up. But um, it's good to have the list editor because I can do things like change all the velocity of um, one note. I can do like a reverse where you select everything outside. So I could get rid of these after touches just by deleting them. Um, there's good stuff you can do here. Like normally you can take all the notes down, but if you hold Alt it carries on taking all the notes above down, even if the bottom one has hit the bottom. It's kind of like you can get compression, MIDI sort of compression type things like this. So it just kind of brick walls it. Um, so I really like the control that the, the list editor gives me. And it means you can move notes around here. It's great for doing all the note lengths at the, at the same time. Um, so I'm really used to that. And, and it's just my kind of preferred... Uh, environment for for getting into the MIDI. Uh, okay, boy. So I was just going through the bass, wasn't I? Hold on. Okay, so it's got a uh, little radiator on. Uh, another sort of saturation plugin, and then there's a seventh heaven reverb. Pretty sure. You can hear the sample looping around there. So yeah, that's the bass. Yeah, the the, the, the list editor's cool. You, you, you can get you can get stuff done pretty quick without having to drag things around with a mouse. <laughs> We're having little Ableton logic off here. Elon Musk, you don't know what list editor. This is the um, list editor here. Just these numbers. So it's got kind of the, the note exactly where the note is. MIDI channel. Who cares about that? What the what the note is? The velocity in terms of loudness and like how long how how long the note is you can filter stuff out the top. I 
Okay, so that's the bass. We covered all these bits, yeah. So we've got the percussion, some extra hats came in, a top hat, some skippy hats. We're not at 16 T's, which is great. Corn size is 16 and 58%. Yeah, and now um, there's two pianos, I think, on this record. Uh, in my old house, I had a Steinway uh, in my sitting room. And this is a recording from that. So I must have... Um, made the groove <clears throat> upstairs and then brought it down on a laptop and recorded this. PM40, uh, I think that might be a, a boom mic that you can put over a grand piano. I can't quite remember, but that's the mic anyway. So yeah, I've played this over the groove. Oh, let's see what we've got on that. So EQ to roll off the bass, probably a little bit of lift to give it some warmth down the bottom. Uh, we've got a C2 compressor. I love the C2. I like it on vocals, on vocal setting a lot. And Seventh Heaven Reverb. I think we had West Church before, in the East Church, go on. So yeah, this is piano, <clears throat> live piano, a lot of roads. It's quite organic, this track. And the, and the bass, it looks like I've just played this in one, one go. So we saw the little filter down on the drums. Spice vocals again. Some mad reverb uh, delay on. It's funny that it's not showing me the samples. Okay, here we go. Yeah, these are. Uh, splice samples and quite often what I do is I'll get a load of I will just pick some vocals that I kind of like the sound of download them stick into a sampler instrument and then have a, a, a tonal groove going on behind and I'll run through them all and pitch them all differently you can see I've changed the tuning so they all I get them to fit into the tune as much as I possibly can I'll kind of just run through and tune them all uh, and then sort of begin to just play around with them shot for so this is pitch down four yeah it was up here so it's like a pitch down female vocal It's more organic than Holland and Barrett. Go on, cat. <laughs> or should I say cats? I don't know. Cat, cats. Is the bass a 32 bar loop on... Yeah, it looks like these two are the same. From the shape. I think towards the end I did a... And it's probably this. You hold that. Yeah, you can do like a portamento. Yeah. Oh, so we've got more Steinway stuff here.
Oh, so I followed the vocal with the piano there. How do I get the splice samples at the correct tempo? Um, I don't think I did in this. I just moved them around and they stay where they are. This was before the Logic upgrade um, about six months ago, a year ago, where you can kind of pitch every, every single sample. You can stretch time. You can time lock every sample and then change your pitch and it will stay, stay in time. But I've done, I don't really worry about that once. I remember when I did the, um, um, that Big Baby remix ages ago with Ramsey and Fenn, I think I forgot to stretch all the vocals and they ended up being exactly like two thirds of 130 or whatever it was, like 83 or something. I forgot to do them all. I'd done them all in the Akai and I meant to, stretch them to like 130 and I just forgot to do it and they ended up being two thirds so you ended up with this like three over two triplet thing that actually worked really well and I've used that a lot since um if I've got a, a vocal for a remix or something that's you know around 90 bpm or something that's just going to really suffer if it goes up to 130 um, I will try it at kind of two thirds of one thirty because you can get sometimes get it depends how the phrasing is, but you can um, you can get like a three over two triplet kind of ding 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 ding. Nice cup of tea, my piano teacher used to say. It's three over two, nice cup of tea, nice cup of tea. Yeah. Anyway, some more style, mate. So I've copied the vocal, which is cool. Yeah, so it, 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 it's, it's, I'm quite proud of this piano part because I basically picked out bits. So I picked out the bass part and, 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 and copied it. for a bit of synergy. Synergy. Big fade. Now I think this piano is this U1 now. Yeah, this is the this is the felt upright. So we've got two different pianos in a row, which is cool. Yeah, it's this one. got a grand and an upright. So I've copied the mm, you're crazy in the piano there. It's good, it's kind of tying it all together. Because not, it's not like a verse chorus thing, it's more of a rhapsodic vibe. Yeah, so these drums change, don't they? I've got this pattern. Feel. And now this one's yeah. Dun 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 dun. Whereas this is not three kicks, so it's a bit simpler. And then this one. 
Yeah, so the blue ones at the end, I think, goes on another level. We've got a four. Did my uh, vocals on any tracks? No. <laughs> Invisible protege. I'm good, man. Thanks. Yeah. I had fun making this. I can, I can hear it. This is. to this, I thought I'd enjoy it. vocal, little sampled vocals pitched up and down just to fit. Again, we've got this pedal running all the way through. If we take it out, it sounds totally different. It sounds empty. It's like the, it's like having a piece of art on white paper or having a piece of art on a pre-painted background that you let dry off like a watercolour or something. It just hangs there in the background as a um, harmonic foundation. It's funny because it the, the loop is is weird as well. Yeah, it's like um, it's an irregular loop. It's cut in a weird way, but you don't really hear it like that. It's kind of nice. It's sort of um, mesmerizing. It was 
Solo. this piano different studio this is the bass thing oh, that's not how it sounds on the record so this is on the same channel it's just one extra night sounded different though because it's changed its character but it's the same bass part just with one note stuck over the top and it's because of the portamento the um slide it's kind of it's pulling it up so the piano following the bass again Oh shit, yeah, the camera, sorry. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> what was I showing you there? Oh, I can't remember. Let's see what some of these muted pianos were. I'm interested. These weren't in the record. Look at the master bus. Um, so it's a Poltec. Very typical me. Look, this is like half 12k. I pretty much always put this on my mixes just to open up the top so you can hear this sort of frequency. So it's just opened up a bit. Gets about here. Uh, I've used the Manly on this. So the hardware, I used to use the hardware version of this, it's, it's, a, it's a great EQ, manly passive. So again, I, so I've done a tiny lift with the Poltec, but then thought this is a, a job for the manly. Uh, so we've got a lift at, I don't even know how to use this anymore, right, 8K. And 10K. And then our trusty fab filter L2. Oh no, it's not, it's the um, wave one. I think it's before the fab filter came. I like the way that um, fab filter basically called their limiter the same thing, didn't they? I, I see you, fab filter.
yeah anyone want to ask anything else Poltec a repeat offender of these breakdowns yeah I love the Poltec um, you know in real life the Poltec's an amazing machine like most lead vocals end up with a um, Poltec on them at some stage it's kind of like the golden lead vocal um, chain it would have a Poltec on and also the tube tech compressor um, and maybe a, a C800 or something and a, a Neef Pre. I don't have a C800. They've got one here at Strongman though. I can I can borrow it whenever I want. Very clean kind of poppy mic. I've got a Flea mic, which is a U, I think it's a U47 clone or, yeah, I think it's all 67 clone, I'm not sure. But I love it. I, I love the Flea, it's cool. Where did I buy the whiteboard? What whiteboard? Are you talking about the picture at the back? What can you see? Oh, this. Yeah, it's a blind. There's the real world out here. Yeah, that's um, Curtain Road in Shoreditch. But it's night time. <laughs> I thought it was in a classroom, yeah. I got, yeah, I got the sweats. Yeah, so that's liquid. I own the master, which is great. It's on 892. So yeah, basically anything that's on 892, I can rip it apart on here and I probably have it as well. So what, what else is there like? Yeah, soak it up with um, Koji on. Shelter with Bruno Major. Pictures in my head. With a vocalist, it was her first ever vocal on a record and she didn't want to be known, didn't really want it known that she was on that record, but now I guess you probably all know who she is. She's, she's amazing. Shelter, yeah, I'll do that. Strings for Jody, no, that's um, owned by Universal and I'll get nicked. Bruno's a legend, man. He's, oh, he's ultra musician. rocket science any of this it's good it's, there's a lot of playing on it there's a lot of soul in this record in my opinion and kind of nice that it's it's not really a garage record it's like a I don't know, it's a sort of 
textual swung something. What is it? 128 BPM. Yeah. Swift. Looking for a re gem. Rare, rare gem vinyls. And J. Cole, real love unreleased. Mm. Was that unreleased? That was a Dry as a Bone remix, right? I could have a look on the dance thing. What's that really weird chord that comes in before the resolve points? There's there's not a great deal in this. It's literally like, um, I think I sort of talked about it. Sorry, I get this thing from the piano. Um, Welcome. It's um, so we talked about this. It's like a Dorian scale, which is basically C major, but over a D. And then it's so it's kind of like D minor, and then it's just the the third up from there. So you can play any white note you want. Just make sure there's an F at the bottom. And obviously we've got this... Um, pedal underneath so it's just a combination of those things really would I get done <laughs> playing the bits car or I've got to have it uh, no it's my I own the master on that it's on my label I might be able to find that one I don't know camera that's it yeah what were you asking about real love right Unreleased real love. Let me have a little look at my secret screen. Sincere that here. So these like different versions of Sincere, this one was the one that was cut. All the VIP things, that's the Greg Stainer thing. So were you asking about real love? I don't know where that's gonna be, hold on.
I have to look for it. I don't really know why I'm looking through this. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, you can sort of see I've got the that. Similar chords to State of Mind, Take Control. What, this, this track? Secret screen. Yeah, I have got a secret screen. Not secret, I've just got two screens and I've got a screen capture on one. Because I'm running a, I, I run a separate computer for the stream. I don't know if that's a great idea. It seems to work. Other than the fact that I've dissed off my chat thing. But I'll get it back. Okay, I think that's it. I think I've covered that. Unless you've got any other questions about um, liquid. I'll just give it a spin. So this was the final mix as well. I can tell because, um, like I talked about before, I've done a bass adjust on this and I sent it away for mastering and it came back and the bass, I just totally misjudged it. So I had to kind of redo it and send it back to Matt Colton. Let's take this. Rise of bone pressure. Oh yeah. Did that never come out? What time's guy doing his DJ set? Is he on now? Right, cool. Right, Pressy you got that one, but not real love. Let me have a look on it. I mean, I'm not going to suddenly find a bit of vinyl on my computer, that's for sure. I've got Say Yeah remix. That was um, that was for the same guys, Dries the Bone guys. Vince, legend. Funny, I remember doing the um, Dries of Bone remixes. Uh, Vince, who was kind of like one of the main guys in Dries of Bone, he had a flat in Hampstead, like a basement, a garden basement flat in Hampstead. And basically, I did the remixes pretty much in his bedroom. It's like a double bed there, and he had an Atari set up and a desk. And so I just bowled along on my red scooter, my sort of all in one scooter thing that I used to wear those days with a few discs. Um, he had a little kind of set up in his bedroom and just got to it, like didn't do anything at home, just sat there. And I think I did Real Love and all those remixes in, in the same situation. I'm just looking through my thingies.
surprised by anything, right? Oh no. Was that, that was the Greg Stainer thing, right? some stuff like proper corkers on here i started off making drum and bass when i was kind of trying to make drum and bass this is the, i'll do this another time i need to look through these and make sure there's nothing uh revealing not that i've got anything to hide but um i just don't want to step on any toes yeah they're all recorded from that so i i've got a massive dat stash and at some stage, I had an assistant working with me called Peter, and we got a DAT machine, and he kindly, he took a picture of at every DAT inlay, and um, he recorded everything into computers. So I've got digi versions on Dropbox and everything, which is cool. Yeah. I'll, um, I'll, I'll one week, one time I'll do a stream, I'll, I'll kind of prepare some of the DAT things and show you some of the inlays um and sort of play some of the, i can play some of the, like the earlier versions of things so you can see how they kind of came on and obviously when i had um you know before we we did everything in the box everything would be set up on the mixer like on a massive board so at the time you kind of did like kick up vocal up vocal down lots of different versions because the the idea of recalling it was a nightmare if you're trying to recall something in an ssl studio like a big on a big board it literally literally meant going through recall sheets which were um you know literally bits of paper that had a picture of all the dials on it and someone had to you had to go through and kind of literally put a red marker on so when you came back to the studio everything had to be patched exactly the same you had to match it up by hand so anyway we used to do lots of passes that's what i'm trying to get to um okay cool that's it for this week uh, I might do another sneaky little s stream at some point, maybe over the weekend, like piano thing. I'll have a think about it, but I'll definitely be back next Wednesday at 7. Um, yeah, I'll be back next Wednesday at 7 and probably before that. If you don't find real love, I'll show you the vinyl. <laughs> okay. Yeah, real love. That, it's a dry as a bone thing, right? Sorry, I've I've missed all the chat. Cool guys, thanks so much for um, tuning in. I'll be here next week, Wednesday at seven, and probably at some other times as well. Yeah, it was fun going through those. It's interesting for me actually to look back as well because I just, I never go and back, look, look through them. And it's kind of interesting to see like the different pianos that were on there and I can tell how I've moved out, I, the, uh, how I've moved around. I've started like in the top of that house and then moved downstairs to a piano and then taken it to the studio and it's got a different piano on it and finished it there. <coughs> so yeah, it was all um, pretty interesting. So yeah. Thanks for um, watching, listening, and just being there. And we'll get some lamb chops on the go, some mint sauce, all that kind of action um, next week. I could do a raid thing. It's like, it's not really gonna happen. Have you guys, I think I sent you to Brain Feeder last week, but do, have you seen the guy Kit Boga, who does all the, um, He uh, winds up all the scammers. He's a G. Do you want to go to Brain Feeder or Kit Boga? There's only two people I've got on here. Check out Kit Boga for a bit because um, Guy's not on for another 28 minutes or something. Okay, nice one, guys. See you in a bit.